All right, hi everybody. So we've got a DPF out of a uh, Cummins X15. Came out of a uh, 2020 truck, I believe. So this is the newer style where it's all one complete unit instead of the older switchback styles like on the ISXs. So what we're gonna talk about today, I know there's a lot of videos out there about pressure washing, DPFs, you know, kind of a do-it-yourself driveway thing, like so with a pressure washer. The reason I have this particular filter here is because this is what this uh, customer did. So this truck came in last Wednesday, and I believe he didn't even go a week. He roughly, I think he went five or six days after he had pressure washed this filter. And like I said, I know there's a lot of content out there on that. I've never been a big believer on it, and for the test results that I'm gonna show you right now, we're gonna kind of back that up. So we clean DPFs here, obviously. We use all the filter thermal equipment, thermal process. We do have an air pulse machine as well. It's not just a matter of cleaning this face and making it white again is what actually cleans this filter. You'll notice you got these little tiny vessels in this media, and they're probably smaller than a 16th of an inch, and they go in roughly an inch to the other side and there's a trap and that's what collects all that soot and the truck does a regeneration, burns it off, and then you start the regen process again. So do you wanna work on heavy duty trucks and diesel engines? Secondly, do you wanna get there without spending thousands of dollars and wasting time and years sitting in a classroom? So if this sounds interesting to you, my friend Grant has came out with a video that shows you step-by-step how to complete training in as little as six months without student loans and sitting in a classroom and driving the classes. What he reveals in the video is totally game changing. In the video, you're gonna learn how to start your career faster, get the right training without spending a fortune, how to build a strong resume and be job ready in as little as six months without driving the classes every day. So if you wanna get into the trades, this is something you absolutely cannot miss. So to get access to this exciting video, all you have to do is go to startdieseltech.com. Sign up for the free diesel technician accelerator. I've also included the link below. This particular filter was pressure washed and I had luckily a couple days before this gentleman came in I had another the exact same filter same part number and everything that came off of a um, I believe it was on a Kenworth. So exact same filter same part number and the truck had 350,000 miles since the last cleaning on that filter. So we're gonna go ahead and do a uh, restriction test on this and uh, show you what our inches of water column is. And uh, surprisingly, or not so surprisingly, the numbers off of this filter that was this pressure wash were the exact same as a filter that had not been cleaned for 350,000 miles. So we did the light test on this filter, um, didn't see any structural damage. I uh, didn't see any light coming up at this point. Uh, it is pretty, pretty dirty and, and there was another concern, which once we flip this over, I'll show you why we ultimately decided to put a new filter on this unit. So uh, don't see any light in it, so that's a good thing. Uh, I'm gonna turn the light off and now we're gonna turn the fan on. So we're at 2.9 inches of water column. Baseline on this filter, this particular part number is 1.8, I believe. So it's quite a bit higher than what a new filter is. And like I said, I had a filter come in two or three days prior to this one, exact same thing, and it read the same restriction. You know, it was reading 2.9 as well. So that tells me that pressure washing this thing a week before it came here, it had the same you know, inches of water column restriction level as a filter that had 350,000 miles on it and hadn't been cleaned. So that tells me it does absolutely nothing. And I started getting into it earlier, but it actually takes a large, large amount of heat to actually break this bond. I know when, well, sometimes when we pull these filters out of the oven, there'll be little rods. I mean, that kind of look like this. They'll be maybe an inch long and they actually just come out, they'll be hanging out of the, the holes like confetti. So it actually, that, that amount of heat, I mean, I think you need to get over like 920 degrees or so to actually start breaking this stuff down or to break that bond. So just a pressure washer that's, you know, 230, 240 degrees, whatever, is not gonna break this stuff down. You need almost a thousand degrees or more. I believe our oven goes up to 1100. Um, and with different filters can, I believe, can go higher than that if needed. That's the, the key to cleaning is that it's a large amount of heat and you're never gonna get that type of heat with a pressure washer. 
And then as I said, these holes are so small, you're not gonna get that full zero degree pressure down every single hole to try to get in there. Now the other part with this filter is that we were concerned about and why we replaced it is that there's soot on the outlet side. I mean, these should be relatively clean. I mean, we've wiped a lot of it off, but that was kind of a concern the way we had this soot around here because typically the outlet side's clean. So just for reliability, and uh, you know, I didn't want to charge a customer twice. I mean, I gave them the option we can clean it and uh, see what happens. But we decided ultimately just to go ahead and put a new one in it, be done with it. That way you don't have to pay for labor twice and come back if it does fail. So uh, moral of the story is, I know there's a lot of content on pressure washing the DPFs and DOCs out there. I mean, it doesn't cost very much. If you got the, the knowledge to take your filter out, take it to some place like us, I mean, to clean this, we charge 350 bucks to bring the DOC in it. We charge an additional 150, so 500 bucks to clean your uh, DOC and your DPF. And that's if you're taking it out of your truck yourself. So it's not really a huge expense, especially if you have the knowledge and know-how to take the filter out yourself to do it the correct way and do it right the first time. So I think that method is just probably gonna cost you more money than it's worth down the road. That's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the bell for the update, and uh, give us a thumbs up. See you later.